Good morning. I'm Gopal Rajagata, partner related to Southeast, and I want to thank you all for gathering here today to help us commemorate this work of art, Material SG2 2021 by Inca Shinabare, CBE. If you haven't already, please help yourselves with some fresh juices provided by our neighbor, Pura Vida. And I also want to uh, send a thanks to the Dreyfus School of Arts String Quartet for a great performance. Welcome, Mayor Keith James, Commissioner Christina Lambert. <laughs> Today's an exciting day for related the city of West Palm Beach and me personally. When we began the reimagination of City Place to Rosemary Square, we felt deeply that great public art needed to be a focus. Great cities and great neighborhoods around the world have inspiring public art in the public realm, easily accessible by all. I'd like to take a moment to recognize Sibele Welter, Administrator of Art and Culture. The Art Life West Palm Beach Committee. And the Mayor and the City Commissioners are supporting programs to bring world-class art to the public realm. Today we have the first ever large-scale public-private collaboration for a world-renowned artist in West Palm Beach. The artist of this magnificent sculpture behind me, Yinka Shinabare, was born in London in 1962 and moved to Lagos, Nigeria at the age of three. He returned to the UK to study fine art at Byam Shaw School of Arts, London, Goldsmiths College, London, where he received his master's in fine art. Over the past decades, Shanabari has been well known for his exploration of colonialism and post-colonialism within the contemporary context of globalization. Working in painting, sculpture, photography, film, and installation, Shanabari's work examines race, class, and the construction of cultural identity through a sharp political commentary of the tangled interrelationship between Africa and Europe and their respective economic and political histories. Inca's accolades are significant. In March of 21, Shanabari received Whitechapel Gallery's prestigious Art Icon Award, becoming the eighth artist to receive such honor. In a conversation I had with Inca during this process, the artist said something that resonated with me. He said, my work is about celebrating the diversity of communities and highlighting our connections. I do not ever underestimate the importance of public access to such basic, basic principles of inclusion. This sculpture may seem like a beautiful object with vibrant colors. That it is. But the form of the sculpture itself is derived from the abstract, abstract form of fabric being blown in the wind, similar to the sails of a ship. It is intended to signify trade routes and the movement of peoples. The undulating form of the sculpture was designed with a fabric pattern which is commonly considered to be traditional African cloth, based on Indonesian batik patterns, factory produced by the Dutch and sold in West African colonies in the 1800s. The color palette of orange, lilac, turquoise for the batik pattern was chosen to reflect the warm sunshine climate of South Florida. At Related, we are building a space that connects community, focuses on people sharing experiences, and using art to provide access, conversation, and inspiration. We are thrilled by this collaboration to showcase a world-renowned artist in our world-class city. I hope you will find the time to sit near this work, be inspired, perhaps enjoy a coffee or lunch out here, and reflect on the past, present, and future. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to introduce Mayor Keith James to the podium to say a few words. Thank you, Go Paul. Um, good morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. You guys know the deal, right? <laughs> this is such a beautiful day. It's such a wondrous occasion 
and I would expect a little bit more energy uh, coming back from the crowd. So we're going to try this one more time. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, that's so much better, so much better. Thank you, Gopal. Thank you to the related companies, and thanks for all that you have done to create this remarkable moment here in our city. Uh, the city of West Palm Beach is so proud and honored to have related companies as one of our most significant community partners. Uh, Gopal, we are so grateful for related companies' investment in our city, and we appreciate all that related has done and continues to do to add to our city's vibrancy, to create jobs, and to change lives. Thank you so much for joining us with the sh joining in with us with our shared goal of bringing significant art to West Palm Beach. Thank you. Before I continue, I wish to acknowledge Art Life uh, WPB committee members who brought this project forward. I see Phil there. There may be others, uh, and so Billy will introduce you. Uh, but thank you so much. And of course, uh, the West Palm Beach City Commission. Um, I only see one member of the commission here, so she's going to get all the accolades. I said, I only see one. That's you. Okay? You get all the accolades. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the commission has been incredibly supportive of the city's public art initiatives. And if you will join me in a round of applause for Christina Lambert. <laughs> this is a standing ovation for you, Christina. You're welcome. But I know you have been one of the most loyal uh, uh, supporters of, of, of art and culture in West Palm Beach, and thank you for all that you do. Uh, additionally, I want to recognize uh, Yeka Shanabar. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Shanabari is not with us today, uh, but nevertheless, we are so grateful to him for sharing his incredible gifts, talents, and intelligent creativity in the design of this exemplary artwork. You know, I didn't know the full story behind his work until you mentioned it, Gopal, but it is so consistent with what we are doing here in the city of, of, of inclusive growth and building a community of opportunity for all. So this artwork is even more special uh, because of his uh, philosophies. Um, so as Gopal mentioned, uh, Mr. Shaunaberry's uh, Material SG2 sculpture is from his Wind Sculpture series which explores wind shifting through fabric. Other examples from the series have been acquired by the Smithsonian's National Museum of African Art, the Royal Academy in London, and other prestigious museums for installation outdoors in public spaces. The commemoration of Material SG2 is a remarkable occasion for our city for several reasons. With this commemoration, our city adds to its public art collection with its first public installation by a significant world-renowned artists. To have the work of one of the world's best-known contemporary artists on permanent exhibit right here in West Palm Beach is nothing short of extraordinary. In fact, it greatly adds to our city's significance as a destination for art and culture. <laughs> Additionally, we are celebrating not only the artwork, but also the first large-scale public and private collaboration in the acquisition of art by a significant artist in West Palm Beach. This impressive sculpture, framing the new best-in-class office building here at 360 Rosemary, was made possible through a strong public-private partnership between the city of West Palm Beach, the city's Art Life WPB program, and the related companies. Thoughtfully commissioned by the public and private sector, this artwork reinforces our shared dedication to bringing significant pieces by notable, established artists to our city. To everyone who made this achievement possible, I thank you, uh, Gopal and his colleagues at the related companies, including Jordan Rathliff and David Harrison, I saw them here somewhere, Sabili Walter, who you'll be hearing from, our Administrator of Public Art and Culture from the City of West Palm Beach, and of course, Mr. Shauna Berry himself. Jane Cohen and the James Cohen Gallery representing the artists. The Art Life WPB Committee, who volunteer their guidance on public art to our city commission. And of course, again, to our city commissioners, especially Christina. <laughs> That's what happens when you show up for these things, right? In closing, public art plays such an important role in our city by adding to its economic, social, and aesthetic vitality. It elevates our quality of life, civic engagement, and cultural identity. I encourage everyone to visit Rosemary Square to experience, appreciate, 
and enjoy this ex extraordinary artwork. Again, thank you. Now please join me in welcoming Art Life WPB Administrator Sibili Walter, who will now say a few words. Sibili. Nice to see everyone. So, thank you, Mary James. <laughs> the Art Life West Palm Beach Public Art Program seeks artists that are making relevant work and who are committed to a significant, ongoing, and impactful art practice. With this in mind, Yinka Shanabari's Materials SG2 is a perfect fit for our city at this time and place. Prevalent in Yinka's work are issues of racial, national, and cultural identity and how we understand those identities within the context of globalization. For the last 25 years, Yinka has been incorporating the colorful batik fabrics into his works. The fabrics originally manufactured by the Dutch in the 19th century to appeal to an Indonesian market. However, West African tribes adopted them so pervasively that it is now commonly believed that they originated there. Shanabari's use of the batik designs is a metaphor for the fluidity of contemporary global and cultural identities. The artist's ongoing message is that communities are built by individuals from different backgrounds and places, and that we are all hybrids of a multitude of cultural appropriations. Formally, what makes this public artwork stand out beyond its multiple layers of meaning is the illusion of fabric captured billowing in the wind. Materials SG2 activates the space around it with its impression of movement. It is visually, spatially, and conceptually an impressive work. And to date, it is the city's most influential permanent art piece. It is also a perfect analogy to our growing city. Colorful, dynamic, and engaging. A community made up of people from many cultures. Shanibari's work is a reminder that our diversity should be celebrated and embraced. This project fulfills Art Life's core values that public art fosters the appreciation and understanding of fine art and has a direct impact on quality of life. Further, it underlines the importance of cultivating purposeful partnerships that allow for artworks of this caliber to be part of our cityscape. Lastly, Art Life champions artists as vital contributors to our cultural and civic life. It always begins with the artist. So thank you to Yinka Shanabari, and thank you Related, and to all who made this possible. Thank you each all of you for here, for supporting the tremendous value that public art affords our community and visitors. Materials SG2 is for everyone to experience, think about, and enjoy. Thank you for your time. to announce that the Art Life WPB will be on Instagram. So come follow us. We start with Yinka. Follow, follow, follow. Thank you. <laughs> now I have the honor of introducing Dahlia Perryman, who will help commemorate the artwork with a poem about community. Dahlia is an internationally published visual, performing, and literary, literary artist, activist, and advocate. She uses art to facilitate dialogue, bringing light to issues, and healing to communities in trauma and crisis. She's trained 30,000 law enforcement officers, state trainers, mental health professionals, and students nationwide, including survivors of mass shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary in Connecticut, Aztec High in New Mexico, and Marjorie Stoneman Douglas in Florida, and is currently working on a dual continent refugee-led community arts advocacy project. She considers her art she considers art her service to the world and is honored to be here with you today. Dahlia. The indomitable spirit of an artist. Can you hear it? No, seriously, can you hear it? <laughs> Listen. 
this is what it looks like when an artist fights for culture, for rights, for justice, for life. It may be raucous and loud, look like dance battles or move a crowd, or it may whisper like video sans sound. Cut! But it always speaks, honey. <laughs> Four generations, two generations, drawn from generations. Be they British, American, or African descended, art is inclusive. I'll say that again. Art is inclusive. Now see if you were listening. Art is what? Inclusive. One more time. Art is what? Inclusive. inclusive. Thank you. You're beautiful. Art is for everyone. The work of an artist is a revolutionary act. It's transcendent, transformative, upending. It lives a life of its own, inhaling and exhaling for decades to come. For artists are truth tellers, recorders of history, oral historians, griots, sages, and prophets. They are sent to tell the stories of an age, the rebel within or on a stage, through cellos weeping or lyrics on a page. They enlighten they notify, they question, they rectify. They break down walls, contribute to humanitarian peace, and they establish a sense of place, status, and style. So gather around, children. Let's ponder and think for a while. Realize, and I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know, artists speak in colors more vibrantly illuminating than batik fabric that's traveled to any New York Fashion Week show. Hook it to. This is what it looks like when an artist screams, weaving intellectual complexities into fabric and figures, sculpture, film, and photography, both levity and absurd. Ahem. The artist work does not exist to tell you what to think about a work or its transcendent chords. His or her job is to engage enlighten, educate, and entertain you. Um, basically, they guide you to formulate your own words. This is what it looks like when an artist thinks. August Rodin, making art to beautify the mundane, creating radical whimsy, this is what it looks like when an artist ponders concepts, wonders, and dreams. Traversing the high wire of genius, embodying and personifying hope, lest deferred dream. To the students of Dreyfus, okay? <laughs> you, my friends, are the personification of genius. 
You are what genius looks like. Your works, they move people. They move them to cry, to rise, to recover, and to any other artist. They can help you send hope and healing to Surfside. Help us beat COVID globally. To re-engage. Art makes people happy. Makes them forget, work, strive, levitate. And this is what it looks like when an artist gives from the innermost, most intimate part of themselves, their whole being, leaving it on the stage. And you, my dear friends, are what it looks like when a community respects and appreciates what these artists do. Thank you, Asha. Thank you, Dahlia, for sharing that moving poem with us here today. Uh, please be sure to pick up a scarf that was created using the pattern uh, of the sculpture before you leave. And um, this concludes our ceremony for today. Thank you very much for joining us today on this uh, special occasion.